Hey, hello there. This video is intended to introduce you to the authentication tree functionality in ForgerOck OpenAM version 6.0 and assumes that whoever is watching this video might already be familiar with the basic configuration of the access manager and the directory server from ForgerOck, at least the older versions of these products from ForgerOck. Um, I have an access manager already installed on my system, the version 6.0, and what you see right in front of you is the login screen of the access manager. Let me log into the access manager as a top level administrator. As you can see, I've landed on the default console of my access manager. And at the bottom, you could see I'm using the latest version of the access manager, which is 6.0. I'm going to create a realm on this access manager. Again, the assumption is that you might already be familiar with the older versions of the access manager solution from ForgeRock. If not, I would strongly encourage you to please take a look at the older videos in the playlist around the access management solution or the documentation of the access management solution to uh, understand more details about why we create a realm and what are the various configuration possible inside a realm. But to show you a demonstration on the authentication trees introduced in 6.0, I'm going to create a realm. Let's call this realm as FedG. We'll stick to the default configuration of the realm. So we have now created a realm here. Uh, it already has a data store uh, inherited, which is actually the embedded open DJ that comes as a part of the uh, open name product. And I should be able to log into the system as a default user by the name demo. There is a user demo that is already a part of the embedded open DJ, which is now inside the realm, my realm, I could authenticate to this realm specifically using this. So let's look at the uh, authentication just as a recap of what we uh, know from the older versions of the ForgerOck access management solutions. I'm going to authenticate to a realm by navigating to a URL, uh, realm is equal to FedG. And it's asking me for credentials, I would give the credentials of demo, demo and change it is the default password. I'm able to land onto the user profile page of demo, which means authentication is working fine uh, in my open air. So just to give a quick recap of how this is working or the, you know, wh why, why is open AM picking up my uh, user, user, user credential details from the uh, identity repository. Let's go back to the open AM console and look at the settings in FedG, the authentication settings in FedG. If you recall under the settings of this realm, there is a chain that is being referred. And if I go to chain and look at the LDAP service chain that's set as a default chain for my realm, the LDAP service chain has data store authentication module in it. A data store authentication module is nothing but the identity repository that you may have configured. So the default identity repository that is configured in this realm happens to be the embedded open DJ. There is one user in the embedded open DJ, which is demo user. And the user is able to log into this realm uh, because uh, the data store itself is being used for authentication in this specific realm. So this was a quick recap of what we probably knew earlier. There is a chain attached to the realm. The chain has one or more modules in it. We only have one module in it, but it could be multiple modules with appropriate flags that says only one module is sufficient or multiple modules are required for multi-factor authentication. Or maybe I can adapt to, uh, you know, uh, some risk and, uh, display to the users multiple uh, authentication modules just in case if I feel there is a risk involved in that user attempting to log in. Uh, all that is history now from 6.0 onwards we have the authentication trees that is introduced. In fact uh, you would see authentication trees as a part of the 5.5 version of the access manager but was not production ready at that point in time but from 6.0 onwards authentication tree is production ready. So the main idea of this video is to introduce you to the authentication trees. Before we do any demo on the authentication trees, I just want to go back and remove the default data store, which happens to be the embedded data store, just to show you that I also have a directory server, OpenDJ installed as a part of this uh, demo. So I'm going to connect to that directory server instance, which I have and uh, display those users from the directory server under the identity tab of 6.0 version of the access manager. So currently, I don't get to see any identities because I don't have a profile data store configured for this realm. So let's go ahead and configure a profile data store for this realm. We'll call it my open DJ and then specify the type of the identity repository as open DJ. And I'm going to say create. It'll ask me to 
uh, you know, supply further information related to my OpenDJ instance. My OpenDJ is in a machine dj1.mydomain.com and on the port number 1389. Let me add that here. I would like to bind or authenticate to that directory server as the top level administrator, which is the CN is equal to directory manager. The password of CN is equal to directory manager is, uh, is what I specify there. And also the DN, uh, the branch of the directory information tree where I want to start searching for the user is DC is equal to FedG, comma DC is equal to com. And then I would also mention load the schema so that the attributes specific to the open name gets uh, uh, extended uh, schema uh, goes in as extended schema in my directory server instance. So I'm saving changes and when I do that uh, I would see 20 odd users that are coming in from my directory server that I have. So I think uh, we have managed to configure an identity uh, store for my realm. I go back and look at the authentication again. Let me log out and go back and look at the authentication to that realm which is FedG. You will recall from my earlier mentioning that uh, it picks up the default chain, which is LDAP service and LDAP service default chain has data store module in it. So I must be, uh, I, 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 I would be able to log into the real as uh, one of the users from that open DJ instance. So let me try logging in as S homes and you can see that I'm able to log in as S homes. The authentication of this user happened from my directory server instance, which I just configured as a data store. So the only point we wanted to look at at this stage was that uh, the real FedG that we created has a service, a chain, which is the LDAP service. And that chain had one module, which was pointing to the identity store of my real And now I'm able to authenticate using the credentials that are stored in that identity store. Now, that's all history now. We will go back and look at how things are going to be done from the 6.0 version of the Access Manager onwards. So let me log in as a top level administrator. We're going to get rid of the idea of modules and chains very soon. Instead, we will use something called as authentication trees. So let's go ahead and look at what authentication trees is. I'm going to click on trees. I get to see some uh, default trees that are there as a part of the product. Uh, let's not take a look at any of those default trees that exist. Let's go ahead and create a tree. So let me go ahead and create what we call as an authentication tree. We ought to give it a name. I'll give it a name, my tree and create a tree. It's a blank tree. It doesn't have any branches, but of course, as you can see, there are a couple of nodes. Let me put that te technical term across to you. It's called node. You can see there are a couple of nodes that exist for my tree that I created, which is a start node and a failure node which does uh, nothing basically because I don't have any meaningful component inside, mis in, inside this authentication trees here. On the left of the uh, panel, you would actually see a number of nodes listed. Um, each of these node does something. Uh, there are some collector nodes, there are some decision nodes. Now a collector node, as the name indicates, is used to collect information from the user. Remember we are talking of authentication trees, which is basically going to perform authentication on behalf of the users with various underlying data store. So obviously it needs to collect some information from the user in the process of identifying the user. So the collector nodes are meant for collecting information from the user. I have to remind you again, what we're trying to do now is to build a tree, an authentication tree. Very soon we will see where we use the tree, how we use the tree. But just try to visualize this, that we're going to build a tree and the tree has many nodes in it. Some nodes will perform some actions such as collecting information from the user. Some nodes are responsible for taking some decisions such as going to a backend data store and authenticating user uh, by the data that is provided by the user, using the data that is provided by the user. One of the nodes that is going to be very self-explanatory for us is the username collector node. So I'm going to click on that and drag right in the middle panel there which actually says uh, username collector. And I think uh, it is not very difficult to probably guess what this username collector node is gonna do. It's gonna collect the username from the user. Let's give it a name. Uh, I'll say uh, username. That's probably uh, the name that we're gonna give for this node. And we will link or establish a link from start to the username node. I guess uh, you have started to realize what this is going to do. Uh, when I hit this tree, uh, we don't know how we're going to hit the tree, but when I hit this tree, 
the starting point of this tree is a start node which will then go into a second node called username which now hopefully you can visualize as collecting the username information or username from the end user who is who, who has hit this specific authentication tree here so the starting point of that is going to be the username uh, that you you get to see there obviously those who are familiar with authentication schemes would know uh, i think one of the common authentication mechanism used by any of these systems is username and the password so let, let let's see if we can find one more node which helps us collect the password from the users look at uh, the nodes and see if there is a password collector node that we have and uh, um, and, and, and you, you can see here there's a node that matches our requirement that that's the password collector node so let's click and drag that node onto the panel in the middle and maybe we will rename it as password and establish a connect from the username to password assuming that we know how to configure openam to use a specific authentication tree when the user lands on this tree of course the first thing that the tree does is to prompt the user for the username that's the node that comes on its way and then once the username is supplied by the user uh, it'll navigate to the next node in the tree which happens to be the password node so the user is expected to supply the password as well what else do we need in this authentication tree now that we have the username and the password collected from the end user using the tree we might want to push this credential into uh, some mechanism where these credentials are validated against some uh, data store so if i go and look at the left panel uh, you can see there is something called as an ldap decision tree and you also know that we have an open dg instance configured so let's go ahead and drag this into our panel and when we do that you can actually see uh, on 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 my uh, right hand side uh, there is a section where we can define the information related to the ldap server that we have so uh, uh, you know we we configured already an open dg instance as a data store for the realm now we also have an option of configuring the ldap server for authentication purpose so what i'm going to do now is let's rename this node as ldap decision node or whatever and then specify the details about my open dj instance that i have so that's going to be the dj1 dot my domain dot com colon 1389 that's the port number where our dj directory server instance is running and the dn to start the user search you would remember is dc is equal to fed g comma dc is equal to com and then uh, the bind user dn which is the uh, dn you would like to use to authenticate to the directory server uh, that's my top level administrator which happens to be cn is equal to directory manager and then we have the bind password for this user we also need to specify what attribute we would like to use to retrieve the profile of the user from the open dj instance and also the attribute that you want to use to uh, authenticate the user against the directory server so effectively what i'm doing here is i'm supplying some information related to my ldap server so that openam can query this ldap server to authenticate the user so now i guess we have started to realize what we need to do with this tree uh, we would link the password node to the ldap so i guess we are able to follow the flow uh, if and when this authentication tree is used the first node of this authentication tree will prompt the end user for supplying the password uh, a username sorry and then uh, it goes to the next stage in the tree which is the second node in the tree that happens to be the password node the user will be prompted for a password and these information are passed on to the next node in the tree which happens to be a decision node that's an ldap decision node we have used and the ldap decision node we have mentioned some details such as where is my ldap server what port it listens to what's the bind dn the base dn the uh, attribute that needed uh, for searching the user as well as the attribute that is used to authenticate the user and if the result of this is successful if uh, the user has supplied the correct credentials then that goes into the success node if the result of that is false that is if the authentication is a failure or if the account is locked if the account is expired then it goes into the failure node so all of this will go into the failure node so as opposed to the linear business we were having with the authentication modules in the chain we're now able to build 
a functionality around authentication using a tree structure by dragging and dropping nodes and um, making appropriate connections to the subsequent nodes in the tree structure. I'm going to save this tree structure and I'm going to log out or maybe use a different browser itself to go and authenticate against a specific realm, but this time around not using the default chain configured for that realm, but by using the tree that we have just configured. So let's call it as am1.mydomain.com colon 8080 slash open am realm is equal to fed g and the service that I would like to use. Remember, this is the same URI parameter we used for the authentication chain as well in the past. It's the same URI parameter we use for the authentication tree too. So service is equal to my tree is what we've used. If you remember the structure of the TV tree we created, you would remember username was collected first, followed by the password. Then an LDAP decision tree would evaluate the credentials supplied by the end user. And if the evaluation was successful, the end outcome was success. If the evaluation was false or if the account was locked, if the password is expired, then the outcome of that tree evaluation was basically a failure. So let's see how it goes. I hit on this. You can say it's going to start collecting from me the username. Let me give S Holmes as the username. And now it collects the password from the user. Can get it as the password. Now you can say it's going to authenticate me and land me onto the user profile of Sherlock Holmes here. The outcome was quite uh, similar to what we uh, saw earlier where the LDAP service was the chain and data store was module inside the chain. Just that this time around we did not use the chain. We used an authentication tree. Let's take this to the next level to understand very specifically uh, you know what are the advantages of the authentication tree as opposed to the chains that we are so used to from the earlier versions of the opening. So let's keep the my tree tree as it is and go back and create a new one. So let me go back, navigate back to the old page. Okay, we will take the uh, authentication tree to the next level by building one more tree. Uh, which offers us the capability of multi-factor authentication in OpenAIM. Of course, we might already be familiar with how we can configure multi-factor authentication in OpenAIM using modules and chains, multiple module uh, in a chain. And maybe if you specify flags such as required and required or optional and optional, the user would have to go through multiple module instances in a chain. Uh, we will see how that can be done using the trees. And for that, I'm going to create a new tree. I will call this as MFA tree. Let me create a new tree. Um, of course, as uh, before, there is a default tree that is created for us, which doesn't do much. It has a start node and a failure node. What I'm more interested in uh, is to use a one-time password also along with the uh, LDAP authentication that we observed a little while earlier. So we saw the user getting authenticated with the LDAP module. We wanted to have the user authenticate with both LDAP module and the uh, one-time password. So for that, let me first uh, uh, do one thing. I will bring in the earlier tree that we created, which is basically a tree that uh, performs authentication using the LDAP server. For that, if I scroll down, uh, you can see there is something called inner tree evaluator, which helps us bring in an already existing tree that we have. So as you can see, uh, the inner tree evaluator is our LDAP uh, tree. So let me call it as LDAP tree. And you can see a drop down where the default trees, where the trees we have in this realm is listed. You would remember that the tree we created earlier is my tree. So I'm going to choose that. And let me connect start to the LDAP tree. So I kind of, uh, so we know what happens as a result of it. Uh, when this tree is used, the tree will ask the user for the username and the password because that's what you have in the LDAP tree. And then it will authenticate the user against the LDAP server we've configured in that LDAP tree. And if the result is successful, obviously it'll come to true. If the result is a failure, it will be false. So I think one uh, easy decision that we have is if the outcome of the LDAP tree, that is the inner tree evaluator is false, then that will definitely come to the failure node. The outcome, the final outcome of that is going to be a failure. 
what i want if it is true is to take it through a second factor authentication which is otp so our task is to figure out you know what are the various nodes that exist for generating otp evaluating otp and then finally taking a call on whether the otp is correct or not so you can see there are a number of nodes that are related to the one time passwords in here so let me do one thing i'm going to look at OTP generator to start with. You can see there is a HOTP generator which is responsible for generating a one time password and connect the true with the HOTP generator, which means that the, if, if the outcome of the LDAP decision tree is true, if the user has successfully presented the credentials of the LDAP tree, then the user will be, uh, uh, you know, th there will be a HOTP, a one time password that's going to be generated for this user. It's not sufficient that a one time password is generated. It should also be sent to the user for which we will use another node or OTP email sender, which gives us an option of configuring an email server, etc., uh, for sending that email to the end user here. So we'll fill in these details such as, you know, what is the email server that I want to use to send that email to the end user. So let me specify it as smpp.gmail.com. I'm going to use a Gmail to send that email address and the port number is 465. The username I would like to use to authenticate to send that email and the password for that username, uh, very similar to what you might have already configured in the HOTP authentication module, in the older versions of the access manager, that's that you are doing it in a node this time around when we are configuring it using the authentication trees. The email address, uh, from email address, uh, I would give the same email address there and the mail attribute, rest of it, we will keep it as it is. And let's save it. Uh, sometimes you may not be able to save it if if, if, if if you don't have a meaningful tree structure created. So let me connect the HOTP generator with OTP email center and try to save it. Again, uh, there should be an outgoing connection from the OTP email center. For that, I'm going to uh, call OTP collector decision. So uh, the outcome of the email center is actually sent to the OTP collector decision. So uh, which is which is basically going to figure out whether the user has supplied the uh, correct uh, credential or not and if the user has supplied the correct credential then obviously the outcome of that is going to be success so let me link the true with success and if the user has supplied a wrong credential no prices for guessing the outcome of that would be a failure now i think i can save it let me go back and verify that the OTP email sender is configured correctly. So I guess uh, this tree structure also is understood pretty okay because if I hit the authentication tree called MFA tree, then first the user will be prompted for a username as is indicated by the LDAP decision tree. Then the user will be prompted for a password and then the user will be uh, evaluated against the LDAP tree, LDAP uh, server. We have configured the LDAP server inside that. The overall outcome of that is success. If it is true, then uh, one-time password is generated. Uh, again, I can I can specify what is the length of the one-time password that I want. I'll specify it as six. And then uh, using the configuration that I've supplied here, it's going to send that uh, using this email server settings to the end user. And when the end user supplies those uh, one-time password, if the uh, decision, uh, the OTP collector decision node identifies that password to be correct, then the outcome of that is going to be successful. So the overall outcome of the authentication tree is a success. The user is allowed access. If the outcome of this is not successful, then the overall outcome of this authentication tree is a failure. So it goes into the failure node there. So let's see how it works. We will go back to the browser Chrome and then uh, try to authenticate to the realm fedg one more time realm is equal to fedg and this time we're going to authenticate with the authentication tree mfa tree you would remember service is the uri parameter i could use to authenticate using the mfa tree so mfa tree is the name of my authentication module uh, it is case sensitive so here we have mentioned it wrongly let me just fix it MFA tree you can see it's prompting me for the username. Uh, so let me supply the username S Holmes. In the meantime, it's also a good idea to open the Gmail because for the user S Holmes that I've been using for showing you this demo, uh, 
I've configured an email address. Uh, so we will go ahead and look at that email address, monitor the emails on that email address. Uh, because uh, when a one-time password is generated for that user, that user is going to get that password in here. So let's wait for that Gmail to pop up and then uh, we will, let me just log in as that user, a dummy user ID uh, is used for that S Homes user. I'm going to log in as that user, give the password and clean up the inbox if it's required because that way uh, we will only have the relevant email in our inbox once the OTP is generated and is sent by the authentication tree. So maybe I'll just, I will just clean this up. So we don't have anything in the inbox, it's clean. We can go back uh, to testing our authentication tree. I am logging in as S Holmes. Let me supply the credential. Last time you remember when I used my, my tree authentication tree, only the username and the password was required. I was allowed to uh, uh, log in. Uh, this time around, the outcome of that is now sent to OTP generator. OTP generator will then use the center, email center to send an email address to the user and then decision uh, tree or the node uh, will decide whether the user has supplied the correct OTP or not. And based on that, the user will be allowed access eventually. You can see it's prompting me for one-time password. And if I go back, there is a one-time password here, 067109, 067109. And you can see that I'm able to log in. So with the help of the authentication tree, I was able to quickly uh, get into the multi-factor authentication mode, something that you might have already seen using the module instances and uh, the uh, the module chain. Uh, you know, if you wonder why, uh, what then is the advantage of authentication module? One of course was the uh, login interface that you might have observed. It's it's uh, showing you exactly what is required, uh, the username followed by the password, etc. Uh, also, you know, giving a choice to the user. These are easy when it comes to the authentication tree as opposed to what we had in the authentication module and uh, the authentication chain. Uh, just to uh, make that point clear, let's say there is this node called choice collector. What if uh, the second factor authentication, we wanted to give a choice to the user just to make sure there is no friction. The user probably may not be interested to go through a number of authentication techniques uh, before he or she finally lands on the page that he's interested in. Uh, so uh, what, what could we do to reduce the friction that the user has, maybe offer him or her a choice of authentication and say, you know, you can authenticate using this or that. So there is something called as a choice collector, which I can drag and drop here. And then uh, from the outcome of my LDAP decision, I can actually connect to the choice collector here. So I'm going to connect this to the choice collector. And then uh, if I click on choice collector, you can see there are multiple choice you could give. So for example, choice number one, let's call it as OTP. Okay, let, let, let's, let's put that as the default choice. Choose an auth of your choice. And then maybe I'll, I'll put a dummy uh, authentication module such as JDBC, JDBC or whatever, just to make this point clear. And now I go back and link this OTP with the HOTP generator. And if I had another module or another tree or a node which uh, which would take a decision based on JDBC or whatever is the backend module instance used, I could connect that to those uh, nodes as well. But for the time being, I don't have it. So let's uh, that, that's just a dummy uh, thing I have created. Let me save it. And uh, we would go back and look at uh, what this might have changed for the end user. I'm going back to my Chrome and authenticate to the Realm, my Realm. Uh, it's actually FedG and uh, service is equal to MFA tree. Let me see what we get as a result of it. I think the first part of it is gonna be very similar. I say S Homes and give the password of S Homes. Last time it directly landed me onto the page which prompted for a one-time password. This time around, since we added a new node called OTP uh, uh, collector, you can see that you know the choices that we mentioned in there, which is a one-time password in the JDBC, and the message we supplied there that's here as a part of it uh, 
So I can now decide as an end user what choice uh, I would like to go with for my second factor authentication. So obviously the JDBC in our case is dummy. So I'm going with OTP. That means what happens as a result of it, it'll definitely send a one-time password. Uh, uh, I think we have two emails now, which is 005822, uh, 005822. And you can see that here, uh, it's basically, uh, it's, it's landing you onto the onto the profile page. Now that now that we understood a, a couple of use cases in here, uh, let's look at one last use case about the authentication tree where uh, we adapt uh, to a second factor authentication only if there is a risk involved in it. So um, uh, maybe the requirement that I have is to see if the user has given a wrong password a couple of times, and if that happens a one-time password authentication module needs to be triggered. If not, the user just needs to give the LDAP user credentials and get it done with. That's the requirement I have. So the exact same thing, except that I don't want a one-time password to be thrown at the user if he or she has managed to give the correct credentials uh, uh, in the first attempt itself. If he or she fails it uh, a couple of times, maybe then I would want the user to use the uh, one-time password uh, capability of the OpenAI or uh, to get access to the access manager console. So what we will do for that is to probably use the uh, uh, auth level concept in the tree. I mean, for every authentication tree, you could set a level, uh, which is basically a non-zero number. Um, so I'm gonna give a number of five here, uh, a random number of five, meaning uh, every time this authentication tree is used, uh, at the start of the authentication tree, set the level to a value of five. Now, there is no particular reason I used five. It could be a non-zero number of your choice, but just that I've mentioned here. Okay, if uh, the if, when I start this tree for authenticating a user, let me set the level of this authentication tree to a value of five. That's the uh, value that I've given when the authentication tree is used for the first time by the user. Okay, next thing is, uh, if the user has given the correct credentials here, if, if the user has given the correct credentials, maybe I would just, just check what is the level. Uh, if the level is still five, or in other words, if the user has not gone through any failed login attempts, if the level is still five, let the user uh, uh, land onto the successful page and not go through the OTP. But if the le level is less than five, then it should go to the uh, one-time password there. That's what I want. Uh, so um, so I'm, I'm going to check for the authentication level uh, when the user successfully authenticates against the LDAP service. And for that, I have another node here, which is basically the auth level decision. Uh, here, I'm, I'm actually finding out if the authentication level is still five. It is set to five when we start the authentication module. Now I'm saying, if it is still five after the authentication from the LDAP is true, so let me just connect the true from the LDAP service to the authentication level decision. If it is still five, then you can take it to success. I don't need the user to give uh, the credentials again, but if it is false, then you go to the HOTP generator. So that's what I want. Uh, so I'm checking for my authentication level after the user has successfully authenticated against the LDAP tree. Uh, and if the uh, successful authentication, if it takes to the authentication level decision, the authentication level decision is going to check whether the authentication level is still five. If it is still five, then you don't need to have the user go through the one-time password. The user will land onto the successful page there. What we are missing from the whole tree structure is a way we uh, decrement the authentication level for every failed attempts. For that, what we will do is to uh, drag um, a retry limit decision node, send the outcome false of the LDAP tree to retry limit decision. If it's a rejection, obviously I want to send it to failure. If it's retry, what I would like to do is to decrement my authentication module level by one. So let me go back and uh, look at the auth module level. 
So every time a user gives a wrong credential, I want to modify the authentication level by one. So let me just go back and modify the level to minus one. So I want to reduce it by a value of one. Remember when we start the authentication tree, the value is set to five. Every time the user gives a wrong credential from the LDAP decision tree, it goes into the retry limit decision, which will check if the number of attempts uh, is less than two. If it is less than two, uh, reduce the auth level by one, which in the starting point is five. Now it's become four. Then you redirect the user back to the LDAP authentication module. So now if you look at the actual flow for this tree, I start my authentication with this tree, MFA tree. A level of five is set for the whole authentication tree. The user is going to be authenticated against the LDAP decision tree. On the first attempt itself, if it is true, it goes into the next one which says, what is your authentication level? Is it still five? If it is five, obviously it is five because it didn't go through any decrement stage. It goes into the success node. The user is allowed access. If it is false, then the user will have to go through the one-time password, which is the email uh, one-time password in our scenario. So for that to happen, obviously every time you make a wrong call or uh, you give a wrong password on the LDAP decision tree, it will check for the number of attempts the user has uh, uh, number of attempts the user has made. If it's less than two, uh, then uh, the auth level, which is originally five, is decremented by one, and the user is uh, user is asked to authenticate one more time with LDAP. And if it is successful, it'll again check for what the auth level is. But this time around, the auth level has come down to four. If the user's failed login attempt, the user will now be asked for authentication against the one-time password, and then. The rest is history. If the user supplies the correct credentials, the user will be. So let's see uh, how this works now. I'll go back to my uh, browser. Let me look at realm is equal to fedg. Realm is equal to fedg, and uh, service is equal to mfa tree. As expected, it's asking me for my username. I say S Holmes and I give the correct credentials now. It's landing me onto the profile page of the user. So no more OTP required because I've given the correct password. I'm going back again, um, going through the flow one more time. So in the tree structure, I'm supplying the credentials S Holmes. I'm giving a wrong password. Mind you, when I do that, it is actually checking whether I have given a wrong password. If yes, it's going to reduce the auth level by one, which means it becomes one, it becomes four. I hit here, it's asking me for my username again, uh, which is what you expect for the LDAP. So I'm giving the username. This time I'm giving the correct password, but even though I'm giving correct password, though I'm giving the correct password, it's actually going to take me through the OTP because the module level uh, is four the level has been reduced by one so let me try that uh, it's asking me for my one-time password i would have received it by this time that's one nine nine four five four one nine nine four five four you can see i'm able to land onto the profile page of course this was just an interaction there is much more to it um, you, know, you can improvise on this in fact this time around it asked me for the username twice when i give a wrong password you could modify your tree in a way that it only asks you for the password if you give a wrong password and there are so many other things you could do with the authentication tree i hope those who are not uh, familiar with this i hope you've got some idea around what authentication tree is how you could make use of it so i strongly encourage you to please take a look at the 6.0 version of the access manager and specifically the authentication tree capability of the 6.0 access manager thank you for watching this